Yeah. Whoa, look, it's time to go viral. I'm homicidal, I'm killing all my rivals. I'm the man, shit, I put that on the Bible. I spot off my target, cause you know I got the title. Hey, I'm a Mac too. I told baby, shake that ass like she apple. She said it's real, so she got my name tattooed. House full, so I hit it in the back room. Whoa, baby said she needed now, peep the urgency. I want a little Kim before she had the surgery. Leg spread on that hardcore poster. She love twerking, she just do it for the coach. Big dog, big dog, bull master. Six tray Chevrolet, I'm classic. All these niggas mad at me, that's tragic. The main bitch in the bed, that's graphic. Yeah, we about to go viral. Hey, hey, hey. We about to go viral. What's the deal, people? It's your boy, the one and only, your host that do the most, Mr. Vara himself, aka the villain, because they hate me for my opinion. Shit. Welcome back to another episode of the Viral Way Podcast. Make sure you share, like, subscribe to the channel. Best podcast in the world, bar none. Come here for the facts, you can go over there for the cap. We ain't doing no scripting, no fake fights, no nothing. We just curating real, raw, and uncut content. As always, I got the squad in the building. I got my co-host in the building. Yeah, Messiah the Great. You already know, we're here to lead the way. And if you ain't moving with the movement, it's moving without you. It's straight like that. She, we got the co-host, co-host in the building. Callie the one, not the two. That's a fact. Hey, man, get with it or get lost. Come on now. Easy, right? Hey, look, I'm going to tell you like this. Lions never lose sleep over the opinion of sheep. Remember Facts. that. But as always, we got to start with what's shaking the world up. Mm. First of all, I'm going to start by... Apologizing to Cassie because we was low key on your ass thinking you was just out for the bag, but the diddly the diddy diddler done revealed himself. <laughs> diddy done did it again. <laughs> diddy done did it again. <laughs> did he do it? Did he not? <laughs> God damn it, he done did the shit. He done did it. Yeah. All, now, ass- all assumptions is killed. Cut it, now bro. I'm gonna say yeah, this at this point because we was the main one saying we wasn't gonna jump out there until we seen some type of proof. And Lord behold, CNN just dropped a bomb. Diddy is on tape whooping Cassie ass. I'm going to go to the footage for the ones who ain't seen it. Exclusively by CNN appears to corroborate some of the allegations of abuse against music mogul Sean Diddy. Shows Combs assaulting his then girlfriend Cassie the Ventura. Cut got pink socks on in the towel. In March Louis B- uh, LV bag, he didn't took. Nigga got her socks on. You know you mad, you stomping somebody yeah, barefoot. Not, you know, you, you know it's bad when she played dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in this video, there is no audio. That's, that's wild. Crazy. That's wild. Extremely intoxicated and punched Miss Venture. Yeah. Man, this is this is crazy. It ain't funny, but it is is wild. The man chased her down. In a towel with pink socks on. Whatever they said he did, he did that he shit. He did that it's shit. So he good. did that shit. It's over. Yeah. It's no coming back. It ain't no justifying that. Diddy is an official bitch. 50 been telling y'all for years. The industry been whispering about it for years. Y'all owe Jaguar right an apology mm. too. Shout out Miss Jaguar right because she told y'all years ago and y'all called her crazy. Said she was a conspiracy theorist and she been telling y'all about this. Y'all been thinking he been running around L.A. and New York with them Joker costumes on for no reason? Bro was really the Joker out here. How y'all feel about this <laughs> it shit? It ain't even that. Did he cook, cuz? Cuz did some... Cuz did bullshit. Yeah. He did bump. Then you tried to overkill a bitch or the, the woman. Excuse me. He tried to overkill her off of nothing. I wonder what she did to make cuz that mad that he chased her in the towel. He hopped out the shower. She probably tried to sprint up out of there while cuz was in the shower making her escape and cuz went crazy. So I'm just like... Diddy, you even if you didn't do everything that they say you did, you so already good. guilty now. You didn't blew yourself. I told you, cuz, leave the country, go do like face off, change your face, and just fall off the earth. It's over now, cuz. They coming to get you, fool. You nah, nah, enjoy, it's a it's enjoy your freedom, cause that 23 and 1 or whatever they trying to do to a nigga, it's it's bad, cuz I know. I'm gonna say this, Diddy, you are one of the reasons why women is online saying they'd rather be stuck in the woods with a fucking bear. Cause of this type of bullshit right here. To stomp a woman out barefooted, like you said, what could she have possibly done? See, this gets to the point where money's not enough. The man has all the fame in the world, he has all the money in the world, he has access to all the women in the world, but that's not enough. That shit is boring after a while. Now, that's now, the, that's it's the, the control factor. Control free. Exactly. Yeah, when you want to be too free. in control, you feel like you somebody, and now, like, this woman, you ain't got no real control over. So it's really more of a, I think it's stimulated from an insecurity. It's like, nigga, I'm Diddy. I got money. You supposed to do what I'm saying. Like, 
And she like, fuck all that. Like, and Cud doing what he doing. They was been saying he made her shave her head, do all that mm-hmm. other crazy shit. Had her wrapped up. She finally tried to find her escape. And Diddy went ham. He lost his goddamn mind. Diddy's a bitch. What I would like to see, <laughs> what I would like to see is if a nigga that's on the same type of time, same size as you, let's see if you drag him around and kick him and do all the other extra shit. I feel like a lot of these niggas with money, they get to avoid a lot of the consequences that regular niggas would, would have if they was to to go on a power trip or to be arrogant or to be disrespectful. So I feel like that creates this like superiority complex where I can't be touched. So now I'm going to do whatever it is. And exactly. I'm trying to control every single thing that goes on because he's not really living in reality. Nobody telling bro. No, you feel me? Nobody's giving bro any type of pushback. Nobody's telling bro he's wrong. So he probably feels that he is invincible. And also he probably just got real life problems that we don't know about. Um, Bro's obviously missing a screw up here to me. And I don't know. I think that they're going to use, what we just seen on the camera to pretty much say, hey, everything else is true, bro. So you cooked. This is the cold part. They say he paid the hotel, whoever is in control of the footage, 50000 to keep it under wraps. Because apparently this was in 2016. So I was thinking in my head, like, damn, they sat on this damn near a decade? Well, I guess he had the footage and that raid, they found it mm-hmm. and leaked it. So who, like I said, whoever he pissed off on them higher ups, who was his umbrella of protection, and they done pulled the, the wool back. Now it's like it's just fair game on Diddy. And if they have this tape, to me, this is like the warning shot of what's to come. Because I want to say there's plenty more tapes with way more wild shit on it. A lot of celebrities is finna get brought up. I've been seeing a lot of names. I'm not going to mention their names because I haven't seen any hard evidence on them to come. But it's looking ugly, and it's looking like a lot of them... He's not going to beat these allegations. They already said, he talking about, look, if I go down, we all going down. Yeah. So if you got any attachment to the dirt Diddy been doing, it's ugly for you. I know you spooked. Right now, everybody, like, where's Stevie J? Because he was riding hard for this nigga. was just in the 24-hour fitness bathroom talking about uh, uh, the King Kong song. I'm like, yeah, you quiet now. You got to be, though. Because it's nah, like facts. the shit just came out that, you know, the, the dude you was riding for, it's literal proof of him, you know what I mean, abusing her. So it's like, what can you say now? Even if, but even if he didn't know, it's like, nigga, True. you're going to get caught in that raft being around it. It's like a tornado or a motherfucking a wave that's going to come wash everything around it. You feel me? It don't matter if you guilty or not. Nigga, you associating with it, it's going to swallow you up with it. You're going to pay the effects. But even like you said, even if they had that, that video, what made them put it out just now and he a fool if Cut really had the nerve to get the video and didn't destroy it. Mm. Like, nigga, what fuck would you hold evidence on yourself for beating this beating this woman up? Like, Cut, wow. I but, guess it's like maybe like a trophy. Like, you know. So that's what man, I was going to get into. Yeah, like, that like a, a trophy, lot of people. Like a monument or something. A lot of people or, or save you, those types of things. Or do they you do, save yeah. it to keep it like like for her or something? I don't know what you do. Nah, because it's like I can't even fathom me <laughs> thinking of why. Like, you would do it, yeah. You know what I mean? You got to realize, yeah. Keefy D had... Mm. Bullets from yeah. the Tupac shooting. That's a trophy. That's different. So that's but what I'm saying. That's a body. Would, I get what you're saying. I would never keep no stupid shit like that either. But if you know you did it, you're supposed to take that shit to the grave. But the but type the of the shit day, he's accused of, is that a trophy for him? Could they, be. Them shit ain't no trophy. A trophy you, you, for who? What? Uh, uh, being a whatever, whatever they calling him, a petty or what? all this other weird shit. Like, them ain't no trophies. But like you said, these niggas get into positions where they think that whatever they're doing, it's like... It's like I got so much money that I could do whatever. Yeah. There is no laws for me. But this is what people fail to realize while we preach the universal laws. Mm. You can't mm-hmm. escape them laws that you can't see. They will, that energy will eventually form back and fuck you over. And now that's what we're seeing in real time right now when it comes to this shit. No, that's a fact. And to me, you know, I feel the worst for the kids because I feel like at least the younger ones, like, you got to you got your pops and you know kids are are prone to believe what their parents say especially when your parent is famous and successful i feel like you looking at him like he could do no wrong now to learn with everybody else that he is this abusive you know crazy person that creates trauma and trust issues forever so i feel like that's the losers for real of the situation is the kids, and, and that's unfortunate. I don't think they losing them niggas is paid, and I think, <laughs> and on top of that, I think them niggas already knew what the fuck was going on. It's like nigga, this how you, this how you. I've been running this game for so long. I've been doing this shit since the nineties. Let me tell you how to last in this <laughs> shit. And I think he programmed his kids to be a certain way. Also, I ain't gonna just put them assumptions on them, but we mm-hmm. hear a lot of allegations already on 
the oh boy, yeah. the one that looked just like him. I forget cuz. The one who made the diss song? Yeah, I'm saying. Combs, so yeah. cuz is more like, you know what I mean? He probably been know what's going on. You're gonna defend your pops to the grave if he got you made to that point, but now you seeing it, it's like cuz read nothing you can say. You better fall off in the works and just you need to fall off the earth too. All his kids. Y'all no, need no, to go facts, under facts. a rock, nigga, and wait for this shit to boil over. Cause it's gonna get bad for whoever around cut in his household or whatever. They in, they going and digging in for every last one of y'all. Yeah. Nah, cause the kids, when you a parent, no matter how hard you try to hide something, kids eventually find get out. the drift of what you're doing and find out. They just may not never tell you. You think you be slick, but you gotta remember when you was a kid, how much shit your parents tried to hide from you that you already knew. You know what I'm saying? That you never told him. So you got to realize if he's been doing this since the 90s, eventually his kids saw something. They probably heard a conversation. Yeah. Something slipped. Somebody said something, a bodyguard, something like they might have got the assumption of what he was doing. Now, don't he got daughters? Yeah. So that's, and, and, and so I think it's, you know, to get on the kids again, I think in those types of situations, they could be saving face for some of the kids. Like I do think that what you're saying is true too. When you are younger, you do pick up on things. I don't know to the extent that they did or that they have. And then you could have, you could have had um his ex-wife saving face for the, you know, for him to the kids. Hey, he's a good dad, blah, blah, blah. If she was rocking with him like that. So it, it could be a shock to him or it could not. Like you said, they could be shit. Uh trained just like bro to do do what they gotta do. Now you go back and look at everything he's accused of. It's almost like it's damn near impossible to beat at this point because now. They like, bro, you did everything. The pox shit, you did that. The big shit, you did that. Your baby mama, you did that. Like, they going back, saying everything. Like, Shine came out and said, hey, mm. it was really bro who shot the chick in the club. I took the fall for it, yeah. which was why he separated the cases and he had the protection of the feds, basically, because Kanye, a little while ago, mm. his text got leaked with Diddy was like, hey, woo woo. We need to link up face to face. Fuck you, you a fed. And he went on that whole case like, hey, he got these killers and Wooty Bam and people call Kanye crazy. Now it's looking like, hey, bro, might have been working with them people because mm -hmm. how did you get away with all this shit for so long doing it publicly? Like I seen the video of one of his parties. He's collecting everybody's cell phone. Like, yeah, I, yep, I need all your phones because we finna do some wild shit up in here, and we don't need no tapes getting out. I'm the only one with the tapes. But we, but even with the with the cell phone shit, I think y'all right. But I think a lot of them celebrity parties, them niggas don't be wanting no phones regardless. Yeah. It's like you like come comedy in here, show. Yeah, you you know what the fuck going on mm. at the end of the day. And, and when you a celebrity, like this is the only place where. I don't got somebody in my face probably trying to be like, hey, let me get a picture. Hey, let me. So right. at this moment, I want to just be me, do me and just chill. So I, I agree with that. Yeah, but you got to realize what they saying is going on at these parties. Now, I'm curious to see the celebrities who have been so tied to them over the years, how they react to this. Are they going to still be riding with them, rocking with them? Or are they going to get quiet? Because the ones that get quiet to me, might be on one of them tapes. Because mm. if I'm a person who was associated with him, I'm rocking with him, nah, diddy, woo -dee bam this come out, I didn't know about it, I'm the first, I'm finna, yep, I don't agree with that, woo -dee bam he's a bitch, whatever, mm -hmm. shade off. The ones that's quiet, that make me believe y'all might be on one of them tapes. Shit, that's probably or all they, the Or industry. they might be quiet, it's like until it's addressed to them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what, what's the point of coming out and just bring heat on yourself. yourself to it? Yeah. yeah. Even though you know you've been a part of it or you've been throwing a blind eye to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not with that, but Cub be doing what the fuck he do. So I'm going to just leave it alone. You know how some niggas get, they pick and choose. Cub got the money, he got connects. Cub got power in the industry. These niggas be wanting to last before they get blackballed. Yeah. But like you said, now it's bad. You want to be quiet about it. It's, it's, it's just ugly for Cub. It's really a rap, Cub. We watching it in real time, and it's over for Cub. Like, his his... He created his own demise. Like they say, you make your bed, now you lay in it. What do y'all think this does for the industry? For the for the, I would say hip hop industry. Um, I feel on some on some, I guess, conspiracy shit that like they have, you feel me, allowed us to create the genre, put in the groundwork, um, and now they're just taking us all out one by one, and then they're going to replace us with their own type of people pretty much doing what we're doing. That's what I feel like is the next step. Cause you got Diddy going down, you got the Drake allegations, you got other people as well. So what do y'all think 
the future of hip hop is with the like the kings of it, I guess, you know, when it comes to like the the logistics side going down like this. No, this is the this, for me, this is the problem. We need to bend, destroy, and rebuild. Mm. These people been controlling the game and been playing chess on niggas, regardless if it's on Diddy, whatever. I don't think we come in the game knowing about none of this type of shit. Diddy probably got introduced to a lot of this shit from some of these people in the game mm. and thought this is how it's supposed to go and learn how to last or whatever the case is. I'm not making no excuse for him. But I feel like we need to be in power of that anyway. We don't come in the game and be on weird shit. I don't believe. You know what I mean? A lot of these young celebrities getting pulled out of poverty and thinking you got to be a certain way to last in a rap game or to last in these. We don't hear too much about this shit in these other genres. Hip hop is the main thing that they didn't want and they never expected it to last 50 years. You know what I'm saying? And now we're seeing a demise of a lot of our people and we the main ones going at our people. So I just believe that it's time for us to get in power and, and structure it the way we need it to be structured. We should run a rap game the way we need it to be ran and allow our people to eat, allow us to do certain things without selling their souls and without having to do weird shit to just to even last in the industry. You making music and you t and these motherfuckers got to take shit. Y'all, you know what I mean. No Diddy intended. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to do some Diddy type yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You got you to do all type of crazy <laughs> shit just to last. And a lot of these niggas here today gone tomorrow. That's why we see some of the realest people either get chipped or they they, they never get to get in that mainstream mm. money. You know what I'm saying? And then these niggas that is in the mainstream money, it's like, yeah, we allow you to eat for this decade. Either you do some clown shit that we want you to do or you up out of here and we're going to kill you in the media. We're going to kill you like we do everybody else. And that's my opinion, how I see it right now. I think this is like the Great Awakening. Mm. Like that Cat Williams interview Kicked where he off. said it's going to be a lot of truth revealed this year. He was right, but if you know anything about Cat, he's tapped into the whole universal laws and things like that, like bro was just talking about. And if you keep up with any of that, you know the world itself has shifted. The world's consciousness has shifted to where... We in a whole different reality right now. It's like the fake, it's over for that. That's just crumbling. Like bro said, all these gatekeepers and all this shit, that's just coming to the forefront. It's getting exposed. The fake got to go and the real finna stay. So they can never replace us because we created it. You can't replace the original. And there's talent everywhere. Mm -hmm. the, for the ones that you're taking, it's a million more that's more talented who can run the game the way it needs to be ran and represent the culture even better. You got to realize from the mixtape era for years and years and years, the greatest talent was always underground. They always kept it under wraps. So now I feel like this is the perfect opportunity for us to take claim to what's really ours, the culture that we fucking created and cultivated. So right now is the time for everybody that's real to stand on what's real. Mm -hmm. Because before it seemed like you had to be a clown in the circus to win. You're going in this these meetings thinking you finna talk music and all they want you to do is, hey, suck my dick and I got you. Yeah. Or, hey, meet me at this hotel and they got a minor in there, asshole naked. You walk in for a split second, they got a picture of you in there, asshole naked with the minor. You might have walked out immediately, but they already got the blackmail photo. So all of that type of shit that they had going on to control the industry, all of that is being exposed. And to me, it's like I said, it's the great awakening. To piggyback off of that, you know, with the universal law and the consciousness shift, uh, I hope people do realize that, right? Because it's a very small moment in time where we do have to put, you know, our foot on these people's necks if we want to see change. So I think right now, 100%, like you said, is the time for us to get, the niggas like Diddy and, you know, maybe other niggas that are doing dirt and not representing the culture in the best way. Time to get them the fuck out of there and give the torch to people who are going to, you know what I mean, do what they need to do with it to better our people and, and the hip hop culture. That's a fact. Even in the content game, you couldn't be a black content creator without doing some type of clown shit to entertain the masses. If you talked any game, you tried to awaken your people in any type of way. You were shunned out. You was blacklisted from the game. You're going to come in here. You're going to dance. You're going to shuck and jive. You're going to be a clown of the fucking industry, and we're going to pay you. So even that is shifting to where you see, you see platforms who are on top, who capitalize off of that. The fans are starting to say, man, we tired mm -hmm. of this shit. We want to hear some real shit. So you got platforms like this that promote realness and cultivate real content 
and really here to awaken and lead the people, this is starting to rise up. Slowly but surely, this type of content is taking over the game to where the clowns, you're not even going to be able to put nothing out because the people is tired of that shit. We tired of the fake shit. They want something real. We don't want no fake shit. They're giving us fake food. They're giving us fake fucking water. <laughs> They're giving us fake everything. People want something real. <laughs> it's wild. <laughs> and I understand, cuz, like, on some real shit, the struggle is real. But I really believe, I firmly believe selling your soul is realer. Because you get mm. to those points where you no longer have control of your life. You might be able to do miscellaneous things. It look good for the gram. You know what I mean? You taking trips and doing whatever. But as a puppet, when they need you here to go act a fool, like you just said, in, in front of 30 people and you got to dance like a damn monkey or whatever they want, want you to do to play a part, then it's bad on you. And I think that starts to eat at people over time. It's like, damn, all this money was, wasn't really worth it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The money is always good. It's really the financial freedom, I believe, that would keep people in a better space. But selling your soul and giving people that much power over your life, if it ain't God... I think it's 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 going to eventually eliminate you inside from inside without. You know what I'm saying? So that should be smoking mirrors. It be looking good until it ain't. And we starting to see a lot of these people where it ain't. But like I say, it's more stronger on us as Africans, I should say, black people in general. We need to be more. That's why we say on principles, morals, and unity because we get broke down in every single way in they 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 living off of this. They making money while we going to jail and while we still getting fucked over in the media. They ain't, when you see these other races, they don't get killed like this. Diddy getting crucified right now. And they say when you get to the top, be prepared to be crucified. Just understand that shit too. No, and I also want to say, you know, this is a good example of don't ever idolize celebrities. <laughs> Facts. Don't ever idolize no man. Admire them. That's fine. But also choose wisely who you admire. In my opinion, we need to shift more to admiring our mothers, our fathers, coaches, leaders in the community that are actually making a real impact in our lives, not celebrities. Because nine out of ten times, yeah, they got the Maybach, yeah, they got the yacht, but just like you said, when they get a call, they got to go. So are they in control really? Are they really, the, you know, the man on top of the world? Or are they just somebody's bitch and doormat? Then you got to decide if that's what you want to be or not. You get me? And that's when you make the decision to, to, to move differently. So, See, what you're seeing right here is a mastermind circle. We so tapped in, I swear to God. He just took the thoughts out of my brain. <laughs> I was literally going to say, this is prime example to not idolize any person. Idolize the higher power. Idolize God. Whatever you want to call him, Jesus, whatever. Idolize something that's more than yourself idolizing people that's that that that's always gonna lead to disappointment because people have flaws the media they can paint you to be perfect but behind closed doors everybody got flaws everybody got skeletons this is one of the reasons why they say never meet your heroes because mm. they'll let you down because what you create in your mind that's never gonna be the reflection of the reality that you meet when you meet them they can never live up to to what you create in your mind this is why Back in the days, the, having artist mystique was so important. The less you seen, the less you talk, the the greater you were seen by the fans. Now we got social media. You starting to see, man, these niggas is goofy. <laughs> these niggas clowns. Why these niggas start even you know getting on saying? social? He should have stuck to doing music. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's facts. Look at Meek Mill. He was like untouchable. He was for the streets. Yeah. Now niggas is like, man, this nigga zesty. This nigga a clown. Twitter finger goofy. Like he just destroyed his whole legacy. Just talking too fucking much. It's but crazy. I also, I also firmly believe, like me and bro was talking about, this is what goes on to, regardless of what people think, you are or you become what you hang with. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if some of these people was in the streets and they had that street aura or that street mentality and you detach so much from that, you start to lose who you are as being grounded and you become next to these people that was raised from a whole different world than you, you start to become like these people and you start to accept the things that they do based off the money. Mm -hmm. Depends on what you prioritize in your life. If the money is everything for you, you will do anything for the dollar. And when you start doing that, they start getting you to do goofy antics. Then you realize later down the line that this wasn't what it should have been. You know what I'm saying? And then you start to accept those roles and now you start to go out bad. As we start to see with a lot of celebrities, Damn. like my boy said, don't idolize these motherfuckers. That's Keep your faith somewhere strong and keep growing as yourself. Work on yourself. That's the best thing you could do. Other than that, ain't nobody perfect out here. 
But no, we're going to keep crazy. giving y'all this game, Kara. No caps. <laughs> All facts. <laughs> no, I'm just tripping right now because I'm yeah. like, damn, when you really do think about Meek Mill, he was, like, for real, really like that. Like, he was well-respected. The thing with Drake happened, and then he just started just Twitter fingers, like, from that point on. Just unraveling, That's bro. That's crazy. He just, just unraveling. He just... It's getting worse and worse because it was to a point where, shit, he had came back. He dropped the champions. He did the whole uh, uh, felon reform shit with the prisoners or whatever. So he was getting back in the good graces. Even with the Diddy rumor, if he just would have shut the fuck up, it would have blown over. But the more he talked, the worse it get. Yeah. Now every picture you see, it, bro, now you like cut dude look a little <laughs> zesty. I think I think I think it fucked people up trying to balance the image instead of. Being who you are as a person, mm -hmm. because when you try to balance the image, you're trying to live up to all the comments. You're trying to live up to everything that people want you to be, like you said, and it's fucking impossible. But we loved you for who you were, not for what you're trying to be to us. You know what I mean? That raw person you was when you was yourself, it was all good. But when you start trying to live up to these images and Facts. you you, you running through the media, you can't win. The internet is unfucking defeated. We know this shit. You gotta let that shit die <laughs> off. You know what I'm saying? And I was a heavy. I'm. A heavy Meek fan from Flamers to Dream Chasers to all that shit back in the day from his battle rap. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's like you say, it's more disappointing than anything. I just hope Meek can just chill out for a second, let everything get the smoke off of him and try to regain some type of composure. But when the kids get the grasp and mocking you, it's damn over. over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, tough. It's going to be tough That like, get up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, she never went to a wrestling match. Girl, <laughs> Girl ain't doing this show no fucking favors. <laughs> well, we know that wrestling shit fake, Girl, yeah. you shouldn't even have been there. Get the fuck Unless you get your bag, I have no comments of watching these wrestlers, Girl. My kids walk around the house doing that shit. Yeah, like, that's, that's over. Yeah. <laughs> they think that shit funny, huh? That shit, nah, that shit yeah, is. They clown it. Nigga clowning uh, me for playing his music. <laughs> nah, that's what I mean. Like, it don't hit the same. <laughs> hey, but look, man, we, we definitely got to talk about this. This new Shannon Sharp Club Shay Shay interview with <laughs> Kel Mitchell. Oh, my fucking God. Where do I start? So much was revealed in the interview. We only going to discuss the important part. The part with him and his ex-wife. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to just paraphrase the main parts of the interview. So, basically... The marriage started on some bullshit. The marriage should have been over before it started. The marriage started with her getting pregnant and him trying to hide the pregnancy because I believe he was still like on Nickelodeon doing the Kenan and Kel shit. He said he was working on Good Burger or whatever. And that was the case. years ago. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And his parents yeah. was his manager, so he couldn't tell his parents. He was trying to figure it out. So she got pregnant. She come to him and say she wants to get an abortion. After she gets the abortion and they get married, she reveals to him, hey, that abortion, that wasn't your baby. That wasn't your kid. You're dead to me. So right there, <laughs> should have been a wrap. He stayed. Boom, here we go. Marriage starts with her getting an abortion. Moving forward, he caught her at a hotel with one of her guy friends who used to frequent the house, who used to come visit. Whew. So I guess he came home. She wasn't coming home. He said they stopped having sex in the marriage, another sexless marriage, and this guy's a superstar at this point. Yeah. Wife ain't coming home. One day he get in the car, drive around town, sees her car at the hotel, pulls up, jumps out in the lobby. The guy's coming to walk to the car that he bought the bitch. So he like, man, I already know what's going on. I ain't got no beef with you. Just take me up to my wife so I can, you know, confront her, whatever the case. Bro go confront her. She hit him with the whatever the case. Long story short, she gets pregnant two more times by two other different guys. Sounds so one sad. marriage, three pregnancies, three different guys. None of the babies are kills. At this point, he's contemplating suicide, but he said he stuck through it all for the kids. Kill the cuckster. <laughs> he stuck through it for the kids. <laughs> Fuck them kids at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Look, literally. And I guess she came out to defend herself saying it was all a lie and... She went to the textbook 101. He was gay. He was down low. This is why I did all the shit. This is why I cheated. Blah, blah, blah. Like bitches always say, either you're broke, you're hurt, <laughs> your mama black, you, 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 you're gay or you're dick yeah. little. It's like it's all in the same playbook every time. Now, this is prime example of why boys need male figures in their life to guide them. Thank God for red pill content. I'm not talking about the extreme red pill Fact from the yeah. losers who hate women, I mean like the red pill that teaches you how to be a real man. Because I feel like if he had some red pill in his life, the second she said, 
that abortion wasn't yours, he would have saved himself all this fucking trouble. I mean, she took him to family court. She had his funds stopped by the IRS. Yeah. Like, she drugged this man through fucking hell. And this is why I say when a woman cheats, you as a man, you have to leave. Because if you forgive her, she'll hate you for forgiving her. He Fact. forgave her. She lost respect for him for forgiving her and treated him like a doormat. When it fucked every time Dick and Harry in town, got pregnant, all type of shit. Listen, at this point, like y'all two just said, man, fuck them kids. Y'all yeah. got to understand, your mama's a fucking hoe. <laughs> this is it. Like, it ain't no wait till you 18 and you're going to figure it out. Now nah, I'm going to let you know what's going on. And this is why we split. All this sexless marriage, wife ain't coming home. Bitch, you don't come home. The second you come home, it's a U-Haul in front with your shit in it. Bitch, get the fuck on. Yeah. And don't take out of context when we say fuck them kids. We mean fuck the kids as far as you sticking with a mama to keep the kids under a, a two-parent household. Yeah. That's what I mean when I say fuck them kids. But at the end of the day, like you said, she doing what she doing. I don't understand these niggas. Like, you're Keenan and Kim. <laughs> you could easily replace this woman. With a million, I'm pretty sure they lined up. But you holding on to this for what? When this shit is already dead. Fuck losing respect. The respect been gone when she was not coming home, when she wasn't fucking you. Uh, a, a wife, that should be on demand. It shouldn't even be. I don't give a fuck if it's three in the morning. You supposed <laughs> to get that whenever you want it. And that's why these niggas getting stuck in marriages, not getting prenups, doing all type of goofy shit. It's crazy because I hate to see it. Another black man going down by the by the likes of a, a, a evil woman. They all turn sour at some point because y'all got to understand this shit. <laughs> you know, shout out to the ones that do hold their men down and stay, but y'all are a rare fucking breed. But we see shit like this. Like you said, three pregnancies, not one kid mine. Do we got kids by her? He need to go test them kids right now. Yeah. No, that's a fact. Fuck all that. You don't even know if these is your kids. Hey, look, and this yeah. goes back to the stat where it says 40% of men are raising kids that's not theirs. I want to say it's even higher than that. I want to say it might be close to 50, 60%. Damn near maybe 70. Because how many men realistically get a DNA test when his wife is pregnant? Automatically, you assume it's yours. This is why I said for years, for decades, that DNA tests should be mandatory at the hospital. Baby come out. Get, get the DNA from the father, get the DNA from the baby, find out right there before any birth certificate is signed or any of that bullshit. But this is prime example of everything we preach on this show. And y'all call us women bashers for saying it, but you see how it affects men in real time. Where's the where's the uproar, though? Because if this was a man... Yeah, man over with. Woo! He would have he would have been killed through everything. You know what I'm saying? Bitches is quiet. And women yeah. don't come out and say nothing about these type of women because a lot of them condone that type of shit or they doing it they damn self. So that's what's even more crazy. It's just like it's wild and for you to like you say to stick through that three fucking abortions and all this other shit. It's like, cuz, leave with your self respect and your own fucking dignity. You got money. You're straight. You in a position. You a local celebrity, a big one at that from fucking Nickelodeon. And you dealing with you don't gotta deal with that shit. I don't give a fuck. That's you know, wild to me. You know what's crazy is like all the things we saying, and that doesn't make up for self esteem issues. Like at the end of the day, um, he probably was just that kind of guy, and this was gonna happen to him whether he had no money or a lot of money. Cause you know it's it's, it's niggas that sit on the bench and it's niggas that get in the game, mm. and, and and he might have been one of the niggas that just it's sit not, on the it's bench. It's not the fact that it like, happened. Learn from your mistakes. If it happened once, even if you did it twice. Two, three, four <laughs> times, nigga. Bro, really think about Move this. On, Yo, wife, oh, yeah. after she admitted to it, he like, don't got no nigga, respect I for himself. You, like, nigga, no, this ain't your baby. And I, I, and I, the car I paid for, you're going to drive to meet other niggas, man. That's all, man. Cut the funds but off. This is exactly why. <laughs> but this is exactly why we see these goddamn crime scene videos. A niggas going to off they women. You know what I'm saying? Because, like you said, to kill yourself. Every nigga don't want to kill themselves. They rather kill a bitch. <laughs> I'm not with all that. I'm just saying that's, what, that's how far. But I get, I get what you're saying. Hey, but... I'm not agreeing with that. I'm just saying they didn't kill me. Hey, look, this is the one time that that, that 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 Diddy shit might have got overlooked. Bitch, you drove the car I bought and paid for <laughs> to go suck some dick. Chase that bitch down that lobby, yeah, my nigga. Yeah, okay, Fuck bro. that. That's ugly. that's out, bro. And this is prime example of nice guy finished last. Because yeah. when you listen to this man talk, he's so goddamn soft spoken and so understanding the entire interview. Mm -hmm. It was making me mad because Shannon Sharp like, bro, you stayed, bro, you you this, bro, you 
Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. But he kept trying to like protect her image almost, even though he was exposed to what went on with him. Mm -hmm. He still had a soft spot for her. And that is prime example of nice guys finish last. These bitches operating chaos. Bitches are lit women are literally sin. They were formed in sin. In every ancient text, women are described as sinful creatures. The bitch bit the apple and fucked all of us. <laughs> how, like, like, how many times you gotta learn this shit? If they're not guided by a man and they have free will, they lead to self-destruction every single time. This is not woman bashing. This is facts. Women are the most liberated they've ever been in history. They're making the most money. And what are they doing? It? What are they doing with themselves? Sucking dick online, OnlyFans, naked on Instagram, uh, uh, breast thirst trap videos. Like they're literally demoralizing themselves. They don't need us to sexualize them. They're doing it themselves. No matter what position in life they get in judge, pastor, cop, a fucking teacher. famous NBA star, teacher they always go back to sexualizing themselves every single time because this is their nature. This is why them dudes in the Middle East who be having no bitch head to toe cover up because we know if we give you the freedom, you're going to be out here causing hell in the streets. Every fucking war from the streets to ancient times, if you dig deep enough, a woman was behind that shit. Majority of the time, that's facts. But Kale, it's Kale, right? You know what I mean? I'm going to pray for you, bro. And you stay <laughs> strong because you even got enough courage to even go out and talk about that yeah. shit. You know what I mean? That says a lot. And that might start your healing process. But that's wild, bro. And hopefully you learn from that shit because that shit is wild. To even hear a person even speak and say this is what's going on and you stuck around for that shit is, is, is deep. Unless you was... The only, I can't even justify him unless he was just doing him. He nah, like, this, fuck, I don't even give a this, fuck what she doing. Nah, he said he got to suicide. This why oh, niggas... Yeah, I know. If you ready to commit yeah. suicide, is that like... Oh, that's why niggas That's why niggas need to fuck on the hoes early, man. When you in high school and, and, and young, you need to get you need to get hoes, bro, because then you know how hoes move and you'll be able to see that. Like, that's some shit I would have seen a mile away. This nigga didn't see it. And then to see it and then go back again and again and again... That right there, I don't I don't know what that is. I don't even uh, think I don't even think maybe it could be turning the hoe into a housewife thing, or maybe could not be of accepting a person for who they are. Or maybe mm. he accepted her for who she was and she kept doing what she was doing and he T finally got like ran out of that shit. But I think he knew what the fuck was going on. She admitted to it. So it's not like he didn't see it. She told him what the fuck was going on. It's just of him trying to accept her and hoping she would change. I don't feel sorry for though for Brodo. I, I, yeah, yeah, I don't I'm, feel sorry for that. Yeah, He's like, a goofy. You, He's a goofy. Like, yeah. like, bro, at some point as a man, you have to have more respect for yourself than what's being displayed to you. You have to demand the respect from others. So when this bitch say, hey, that wasn't your baby, no, I don't care how much you love her, relationship over, bro. Because it's never, ever going to work after that. This is why I say when a woman cheats, zero tolerance, zero there's no understanding. It's way worse. I don't give a fuck how much they want to compare it to men. It's different. Like bro said, as a man, you need to gain experience with women. Women is the opposite. The less experience they have with men, the better. The more va value she has, the less men she's been with. The more women you've been with as a man, the higher your value gets. Like he said, those red flags, you would have spotted that shit. You got to at least, Could as a man, bro, you got to at least run through 20, 30, <laughs> 40 bitches, bro. You got at least but, run through but, you feel but, me? But, at the but, minimum. But at the end of the day, I think it took him all this to really learn. Like, mm -hmm. he had to... A lot of niggas get scoring early. You yeah, know what 18, I mean? 17, they, nah, yeah. Nah, fuck 18, 14. Niggas Talk be getting their heart broken <laughs> you, need that, shit. you need that heart <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck to these make, bitches, to, man. To give them that strength. Some <laughs> niggas get it earlier than later. So I think it took him to get ran through the mud to really realize, like, yeah, fuck these bitches. That's why niggas be doing what they do. To women, or it'd be payback after a while because women, like you said, without control, their nature is way worse. They're, they're going to run wild. I don't give a fuck what they say, what they tell you. If you allow them too much, they're going to go crazy. That, that's what I was wondering. That's what I was going to ask y'all, too. Like, do y'all think, because um, you just said something, but do you think that him being a part of Nickelodeon and maybe being around, you know, those people and just the industry being that? There's not many black people. Do you think that created more of a docile person? Do you get what I'm saying? That would later on in life be a doormat? Hell no. Nah. He was a kid and he said he had no one to talk to. Meaning mm -hmm. 
he was only around other kids. He was around Keenan, yeah. who he didn't have no kids or none of that shit. He was around Nick Cannon. He ain't had no kid, uh, no kids or none of that shit. He said he was the first person at that studio to, to get his kid. own place. But can we make? Oh, it, so he can was we, cracking. Can we make an excuse? Because Nick ain't going for that. But <laughs> we don't know what Cuz yeah, going for. I don't know. Yeah. But I, right maybe, now, at this maybe point, from at this right point, now, he I got, don't know. He got, got bitches getting it. across his back, nigga. So yeah, yeah but I, that ain't that ain't. I mean, he got Mariah across his back, but I think Nick handles his women well. He got yeah. no, for he sure. got a million kids, and he and he handles all his relationships. The girls are asking him for a DNA test. I'm just test. saying, but his his relationships <laughs> in, his relationships is in a good space from outside looking in. From my opinion, salute Nick. You are doing your shit. Now, That's a fact. That's a fact. But what I mean is. He's he's Kel, you whatever the orange soda nigga. You know what I'm saying? So you're used to he's not used to people treating him that type of way. You mm. know what I'm saying? So once he got treated differently, he probably got used to everybody catering to him and women being a certain way. And then when he finally got a woman that was like, fuck all that and manipulated his ass, I think he didn't know how to react to that. Like you say, he had nobody to talk to. He didn't know what the fuck. It was fucking him up mm. on that like that. How they fuck your mind with the love hate shit? Hot oh, yeah. cold, hot cold. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Blue is fucking yeah. blue is mine, and he didn't know what the fuck to do. Had his ass running, chasing the bitch to hotels. That's out. Come on, cuz. At <laughs> that point, you gonna realize like I'm doing too much. This shit over with. Cause. This is why brotherhood is also important, bro. Yeah. You need other respectable men that you can turn to for advice. Because if you had a a circle of strong, respectable, masculine men, they would have told you, bro. That's that's a rap, bro. That ain't it. Like, and they would have shamed you a little bit. <laughs> Made it like, hey, my nigga, yeah. Nigga, what? We gonna, what? Weird ass nigga. Yeah. Three? Man, we gonna talk about you all type of bad. <laughs> and we gonna help you at the end of the day. But we are gonna shame you to greatness because that is out of pocket. However you want to look at it. Me personally, I think bro fell in love with the 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 torment and the trauma and the pain. I think he fell in love with that shit. Like it's some niggas that like getting dog. Like. Always catching a bitch, fucking a nigga, or sucking dick. And staying. And, and they stay. And keep going through the bitch phone. And some motherfucking weak men fall in love with that type of shit. <laughs> this is why I have no remorse for him. Because at the end of the day, your dad was in your life. You said you could have went and talked to him, but you was embarrassed to go talk to him. So at that point, it's on you, bro. Yeah, cause cause that, that's what I'm saying. Niggas who got dad, you you feel me? You could have went to him. Most a lot of niggas don't even have that. So the fact that you had that and then still didn't do it, I mean, we don't know your relationship with your yeah, pops. Pops probably didn't know shit either. Yeah, but at that moment, it's <laughs> he like probably damn. Been told his ass. But <laughs> sometimes it don't be that. Like you said, like we talked about before, people don't understand. They get addicted to certain feelings. So you can get addicted to negative feelings. You can get addicted to a lot of shit and don't even really realize that you're addicted to that. That's how a lot of toxic relationships last so fucking long. They become addicted to the toxic shit. Then when you finally get somebody to love you in the real way, you like, damn, I'm not really used to this. So the bitch will operate still in chaos or create chaos for you, even right. though you came from a healthy family and showing her how to be loved. And she treating you like a, a, a simp because of you showing her the right way. And she think the wrong way is the right way. So I just think it's, it, it just depends on what you addicted to and realizing that's why awareness is big or being aware of your thoughts and your actions and what's really going on in your life. And if you cool with that, that's on you, man. Everybody yeah. got the life to choose what they want to do with their shit. Look, this makes me want to segue into what I've been seeing going on lately with... It's not up there. No, I thought No, no, I'm going to pull something else up in a minute. With women demonizing red pill content now, I'm seeing that they're trying to almost act like it's a terroristic group or it's a woman-hating, woman-bashing group. And... I think they're, I don't even think, I know they're doing it because now men are waking up. They're waking their game up. Even some of the simps is waking their game up to where when we was growing up, we didn't have access to this type of content. We didn't have access to successful men giving us life advice on women, on business, like at the, at your fingertips, like just in, on, in your phone. You can get the type of game that you're supposed to get from your dad, from Hundreds of men now, you know what I'm saying, from all walks of life, from all races, and women are starting to no longer have the upper hand because men is like, oh no, I learned about this. Oh no, I learned about. This. But you know they don't have to bump their heads yeah, and get that heartbreak to to pick up on the red flags. The game is there now. So now your first girlfriend, you see it. Oh shit, Andrew Tate said this. Oh shit, Mr. Viral said that. Oh shit, and the Messiah said this. Yeah. Oh shit, Kylie told me about that. So now. Men have the upper hand, and women are furious. I think, I think what's different too, though, at least when I was younger, you didn't 
if you had game, you had game. You know what I mean? We knew who had game and who didn't, or the niggas that was niggas and got got women at ease and some didn't. But I feel like the women actually knew their positions. Fat women was not this confident. Mm. You know what I mean? There was the quiet ones in school sitting out the way, hoping a nigga can choose them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you had the, you had the bad bitches that was they they got chosen. They had their choice of choosing who they want to the fuck with. Women knew like what caliber and niggas knew too, or what caliber of women they can get. I think the these social medias and these filters boosted these females so much where it's like they getting a hundred dudes a day in their comments or whatever the case is, or in their DMs, and now they feel like every nigga is replaceable. But like, but like we say, every nigga probably in them hundreds want to fuck you, but how many want to keep you? Mm. So that's, I think, the biggest difference. We didn't have to deal with all that. Social media wasn't big, so you had to actually talk to women. You had to actually associate and deal with women. And, and that, I mean, in the face person way, not just over social media. Like, you had to actually approach women if you wanted women. Or they approach you. So I just think that's a lot of difference, in my opinion. And then, to me, the, the problem I think with the newer generation is something that the men don't have that y'all had is, like, even though now we have more access to the red pill, men are weaker than they've ever been. Like, y'all was way more like, fuck this bitch. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I feel like niggas was more like that back then than now. Now niggas is, I see a lot of niggas crying over females, like, constantly. And, and you know what I mean? To when they're not being respected and still crying over and still going back. So the, the kale shit, that's a normal thing in, in today's world. I feel like back then... It was less red pill shit, but niggas were still more masculine about it, how they handled their woman. Like, now it's just almost like you the female, pretty right. much. Like, that's how niggas is acting now. Listen, shout out all the red all the red pill content creators, you know what I'm saying? But, bro, speaking on the fat bitches that don't know they lane, <laughs> we got to get into this. Because I got some beef for Sports <laughs> Illustrated, right? Now, what the fuck is going on? Why is Sports Illustrated... Promoting obesity. Now, if you look back to in the 90s, all the women and the models who made the covers were fit. Now, every single ad we see for every company is a fat bitch. I'm sorry. I'm calling it what it is. It's not thick. It's not nothing. You're fat. You're obese. That should not be on sports. Illustrated. She ain't played a sport in decades, it looked like. We have to get back to promoting fitness. All this body positivity shit. Bro, look up the definition of obesity. It is unhealthy. It is a danger to your health. It's not a cool thing. It should not be promoted. It should be vilified and it should be shamed. We have to get back to shaming these goddamn hoes and these goddamn fat bitches. I'm sorry. It <laughs> is what it is. We have to get back to being a fit society. Leave the U.S. Nobody's fat. I just seen a video of, uh, where was they at? In, in Korea or one of them spots where none of the yeah. women were fat. They were like in perfect shape compared to U.S. standards. And they were still saying, nah, I'm on a diet. I'm working out extra hard. Like they knew they had to keep themselves up. But with the mainstream media promoting obesity, how do y'all feel about it? First of all, I don't. I don't really, I don't really care, cuz, because I know what the fuck is already going on. Like we talk about this shit all the time. Like, if 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 y'all, you know what I mean. I don't agree with women. I feel like y'all should get in shape and do what y'all do. But everybody got their choice to live their life how they want. But at the end of the day, like you say, it shouldn't be. It should be sports women only on there for one. Because I've seen old ladies and all type of shit on Sports Illustrated. But if you get in your bag and you a fat woman and they decide to pay you to get on there for whatever reasons they doing it, get your money. But at the end of the day, I tell people all the time, it's programming. It's like, that's what television is. It's television, it's programming. So they can put images constantly, constantly, constantly to where they're programming your mind without you knowing. We've seen this. We talk about the movie. What, what was it again? Uh, mm, the Glasses? Yeah. I what saying. What's the name of the damn movie? Uh, what the white dude? We was talking about fighting. They Live. Yeah. They Live. I'm saying, go watch They Live. And you watch... Literally, constantly, how they program, and they have a lot of documentaries and videos of images. Images is one of the strongest things to program you. So if they keep putting images, images, images in your mind, it programs your mind to accept this, and that's what they're doing now. Come on, cuz that's wild. How the now. fuck 
does this that make Sports crazy. Illustrated? But this then you got niggas in the how? comments. How? But then you got <laughs> niggas in the comments like they love this shit. They need what's his name there? What he say? He said Taco Body Bitch, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fat Body Bitch, Pink Body Bitch. And look, this is the cold That's part, wild. right? <laughs> Cause this, cause as black men, we like heavier set women, right? It's just a fact. We, we like, like thicker, thicker women. women. We like thicker women. But this is obese. We have to call it what it is. We are in a society where the lines are being blurred and we everybody's lying to everybody. This is not healthy. Bro, she is a cheeseburger away from a, a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, and you know what's Her crazy? arteries is <laughs> fucked right now. <laughs> Like, come on, bro. Hey, and you right about that. You know what's crazy? Because I be seeing people online, on saying they be like, 32 years old, talking about why is this happening? And you 300 something pounds, <laughs> talking about why God give me a heart attack. <laughs> Bitch, you because you, you eating too many fucking burgers. You ain't taking care of yourself. Like you said. So I be seeing this shit. Take care of yourself. It's not even about just you getting fat, being ashamed. It's more about health, but more about taking care of yourself as a woman. As as and don't nobody want that at the end of the day over time. It might be cool and fun to play with when they doing it, but over time a nigga's not finna put a ring on that. Cause. And you know what's so fucked up about this to me is that the people that do do the um the covers, you know, the women that come out here and they say they are body positive, I'm 100% certain that throughout their day they have a moment where they say, damn, I want to be more slim. So you as that person knowing that, then to go and... um what's the word promote to be fat at that point as if it's something good when you know when you lay down at night you're not 100 percent comfortable with your weight it's crazy because you're selling people a lie that's what they're doing shame on all you bitches who lying who lie to these fat women y'all all tell them all oh, you beautiful you beautiful the way you are body positivity but if we ask you hey would you want to trade places with her and have her body <laughs> oh fuck no would you want your daughter to have her body oh fuck no stop lying to people when shame is good if you are fat as fuck, you need to be shamed to be fit. The same way if you go to football practice and you garbage, your coach is going to shame you to be better. You fumble, they on your ass talking shit. Go run a lap. Go do some push-ups. Go, matter of fact, hold that ball the whole day at school. Every time I see you on campus, that ball better be in your fucking hand. And guess what? You went back to practice, your ass never fumbled again. Shame is good. It works. No, that's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact, man. Mic drop. That's Society is disgusting, man. Get these fat bitches off the covers of magazines. <laughs> Get man. them off the cover of magazines. <laughs> I don't want to see no more fat ass mannequins in the store. I'm tired of going to the store. I'm seeing fat mannequins. Like, bro, we don't want to see that shit. We like fit women. Everybody should be fit. Health is fucking wealth. Facts. Let's segue into this because I feel like this is fueling. The, the race war, right? Romeo and Juliet remake has white people in a fucking uproar. We're going to make this quick, but I have my take on it. I think they purposely picked the most unattractive black woman they can find to play Juliet just so white people and people of other races can jump out there and talk about how ugly she is, thus fueling more hate and division between black and white. Now, the original... Romeo and uh, Juliet. She was white. The remake, I don't even know who this woman is. And I'm sorry she got dragged into this because I know they probably paying her. <laughs> and she didn't ask for this type of criticism. But hey, if you jump out in the public space, you will be criticized. I'm going to pull up a picture for y'all. Now, we know beauty's in the eye to behold her, but there's also a standard. Like, bro, she's just not attractive at all. She's actually kind of hideous. This is actually... <laughs> One of the better pictures of her, I'm actually trying to find the one that I seen on Twitter. Why they didn't use a black man if they was gonna do all that? Because they, you know the they, they, they want the shock. They want the shock. Why Romeo had to be the the, the white scholar or whatever? The and they picked they him because he got a black girlfriend. Yeah, or she, not, she, not she, even just that though. But like you said, they could have. They act like they want Romeo and Juliet to be the most beautiful people, and then they they. They chose her, so she catching the wrath of it. Then they had to mm -hmm. use the braids. They could have did whatever. Gave her a natural. Insane. And, but that shit is wild. Like you said, I think they did it on purpose just to say, like, well, we did something for y'all as black people, but we chose her. So mm -hmm. y'all can complain about it, too, at the end of the day. And to give us a reason why we shouldn't use black people again. I think they did this to literally fuel the race war. I mean, how many movies they keep remaking mm -hmm. where the original character was white, then they remake it to a black character, and then all the racist white people come out, oh, ooh, we can't have nothing, and this, that, and the third. But out of all the thousands and thousands and millions of drop-dead gorgeous black women they could have chose, they chose the most unattractive one because they knew it's going to be controversy, 
and it's going to help fuel the agenda. Mm -hmm. Two birds, one stone. How you feel about it, Kyle? I think to a certain degree, they're also picking, you know, not the most attractive black girl because they they're trying to be on the right side of history, in my opinion. So this is what this is what these um, companies do. They do the black remake because they want to say, you know, this era of MGM, this era of Universal, we were on the right side of history. We supported black actors, whatever the case is. What I want to say to black actors and upcoming black actors is stop doing these remakes because they are doing it for shock value. They're doing it to sell tickets. If I'm a new black actor, I'm going to Spike Lee. I'm going to Ryan Coogler. You get what I'm saying? I'm going to uh, Jordan Peele. I'm going to Ava, Ava Duver DuVernay. Like I'm going to the people that make movies for my people not other people because this is what the positions they're going to put you in. So for the upcoming black actors and already <laughs> black bad, actors, start, you feel what I'm crazy. saying? Start yeah. going with the directors that are for us. That's Listen, like I'm I not, said, I'm not attacking her. She might be a great person, but she's unattractive on the scale of what we consider beautiful. So this is the original Romeo and Juliet. And this is what they replaced it with. Like, here she damn near looked like a fucking man. Like, we just got to call a spade a spade, Nah, right? at least gave her up. They should have put a... If y'all going to do it black, y'all should have did both of them black. If both of them was white before, y'all should have did both of their ass black. Maybe it would have looked it better. But even at the end of the day, they did... They was, they, oh, we could have just buzzed yeah. them in. Yeah, they was wrong for that. I think they should have had a black male and a black woman at the end of the day. If you was going to remake it. That's wild to me, though. That is Nah, crazy. yeah. And, like, I don't know, because I kind of, too, feel like... If they would have had a pretty black girl, then you would have had a lot of black women in the comments saying, y'all picked a black woman with Eurocentric features, et cetera, et cetera, because they do that a lot, too. We do that a lot when they do pick somebody black. Oh, well, they not black enough. They don't got the the, the nose. They don't got certain it's traits. It's a lot of beautiful, dark-skinned yeah, women, man. for sure. No, it's for a, sure it's, it is. It's, it's millions of them out there. You feel me? But I feel like that's a complaint yeah. that a lot of people have, or at least within our community, is when, we do pick, when they do pick an actor, they're like, well, they don't necessarily look how we want them to. They choked, but they chose. You get what I'm stigma. saying? They made her have braids. They Yo, chose. They, we they, got a special they, guest in the house. They made her have braids. They chose a dark skinned woman. On top of that, they don't even like us with braids. Like y'all <laughs> judge us when y'all see us with braids off the dribble of when they doing that. So they they, got, they tried to make a clownery. Hold on, quick segue. We got the one and only Mr. Uncle Ruckus back in the motherfucking <laughs> building. Yes, sir. You know black people ain't never on time. You feel me, Uncle Ruckus? <laughs> He said, oh, all black podcasts, y'all be late. I, I show up a little late. <laughs> I assumed you guys were going to take a, a take time to have some Hennessy nah. and get in talk to you. Why you on Hennessy? You said you had, nigga, because I wanted to He told me don't bring it. No, I, told I heard you, you say bring yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, look, I, I got to tell him it's a, uh, it's a white on podcast yeah, next country, time. He'd be an hour country, early. Country, this country, is kind of low for shit, me. Man. Why you didn't bring the, it's kind of low for you? You know I don't have much of a neck, so it's hard to Lift it up. Move it. This thing is like... Dude, nah, the other the, thing is the the, the, right the bottom part. Oh, this part. Yeah. Oh, okay. or lift it up with the thing. Yeah. I See, this, hey, this, this is what I mean with the obesity shit. His fat ass can't even look down. <laughs> listen, <laughs> get it together, nigga. God damn, man. Listen, bleeding, it's nigga. not my fault. Tell you guys kind of low to me. It's not my fault. You guys have petite hips. These are <laughs> these are women chairs. Hey, look, for like brunch. Just a quick segue. Are you up on the Romeo and Juliet shit? Because this is where we at right now. How you feel about this right here? So they basically. White America has been in an uproar on social media because they replaced the original Juliet, who was a skinny, fit white chick, with this manly-looking black woman. Um, that's well, up. that's Ugh. white America's problem. It's a situation that they created with wokeness, right? Ooh. They couldn't tell their children, no, um, I don't want my child to be upset and hate me or commit suicide. So they let their kids decide for America, and their kids decided that they wanted America to be artificially mixed, right? They say, oh, this reflects America. No, it don't, because Romeo and Juliet speak in old English, and I don't mm. know a single black person. But this is the <laughs> world that they, that this is a fantasy world, uh, gender bending, um, forced race mixing, right? Mm. Right. Um, I mean, you look at this white guy, you look at this black girl, all I look at is your son's not going to make the freaking basketball team unless he's Steph Curry. Uh, it's not natural. It's not the natural order of things. But, hey, Whatever fantasy they want, I'm here for Whatever it. Whatever float they bought, huh? Drop mm. them bars. Man. <laughs> dropping them yeah. Yeah. So you say this is a product of the woke movement? Yeah, because it's all it's all geared towards certain audiences. Why do you think the kid, you saw Spider-Man, right? The uh Miles Morales. Into the Miles Morales. Freaking black kid, but he's really Hispanic, right? <laughs> Miles Morales. Wait, you guys don't know this. Let me tell you something you don't know. Um Miles Morales' father in the movie, we assumed he was like a Dominican, right? Me no, me me black, me Dominican, no black, right? This type of thing. 
No, Miles Morales' father mm -hmm. is actually black African American. But he changed his last name to his wife's last name because he didn't want to be associated with the negativity that came with being black American. That's deep. So That's he deep pretends to be Dominican and his son, like just the most effeminate crap ever. And they're just like slowly, like cleverly putting this on you. If you don't do research, you just assume. And then the next thing, you know, you know, you're wearing a dress. Now to piggyback off of that, that's what I was saying um, to him that uh, a lot of people, they wanted that. Like if they would have had a prettier black woman, there would have been people in the comments, you aren't picking a black enough woman. She doesn't have Eurocentric features. Mm. I feel like they would have got on that because I see a lot of people in the comments saying stuff like that. So now that we do have it, then you got the white people or other people saying, hey, this isn't what we wanted. So I don't think it, it's hard to satisfy anybody, really. I'll say this, though, because I seen one woman make a comment like, well, how would black people feel if we took something that was all black and whitewashed it like Wakanda? What if we remade uh, the Black Panther into, you know, somebody uh, all white cast? I said, well, shit, y'all already did it with the most famous person in history. Y'all whitewashed Jesus Christ. Right. I mean, Jesus and all the prophets are black. Y'all whitewashed it for the world, so shit, y'all owe us a couple. Wait, Take that. And you can't even use the Panthers because that was something that really, truthfully, was, was a movement. So trying to use the Panthers as an example is stupid as hell. The he, the hero in Black Panther was a white dude who worked for the CIA. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you really too, look too, at yeah. the movie. Yeah. Um, but this is what... Uh, there's another culprit here. Black women. Especially, particularly the fat, ugly ones. They love this. <laughs> because in their mind, there is a white man out there who's going to save them from all these evil black men despite them being overweight. I'm overweight, so I can talk about you. Despite you being overweight, despite, despite you being bald-headed, despite you being ashy, and despite you being lazy, some white guy is going to want you. Some attractive, six-pack-having white dude is going to come save you from your unforgivable black condition where don't nobody want you. So black women are just as guilty when it comes to this situation as anybody else. And I'm telling you, you can go to the heart of the projects. Let a black woman break her heart. That's okay. I'm going to go get me a white boy. They all think there's this like unicorn white dude out there waiting for them. But the reality is he don't want you just like I don't want you. He want this nice, beautiful, skinny, petite, you know what I'm saying, chick who's going to live a long time so she could take care of him into his old age. Not the argumentative, loud mouth, combative, you know, hair that long chick who can't even cook nowadays. At least back when it was fat, they could cook. Now they just slide <laughs> through the, the, the McDonald's all day. Damn. Look, th this is what's he crazy is there, is there is <laughs> there there is this Divester. preconceived <laughs> assumption that oh black men are evil and I'm gonna date outside my race I'm gonna go date a white guy but then when you look in the white spaces online they they're talking about these women like shit they're talking about black women like shit but leave it up to black women they think like oh he's the savior he's the like where does that even come from like I don't understand it because I love black women I love my black people but there is a divide and y'all have this false notion that you can just go date any other race but like we always say on the show we talk to these guys we're talking to men of other races they talk bad about y'all this is why me and little bro always say we all we got because it's real it's really us against the world so y'all really do have to fucking wake up one thing I want to ask y'all do black men have the worst standards when it comes to women. Because I feel like, because we like thicker women, we'll fuck almost anything compared to other races. They won't fuck like just anything. Like you have to have a certain standard for other races to even take you serious or to have kids with. Okay, they might fuck you, but they ain't marrying you. They ain't having kids with you. They ain't starting a family with you. With us, we got kind of, we leave a little more leeway. Like, White men, they won't date a fat white bitch, right? They say, "Oh, that's for the black guys." So we'll take what they. If they live in a the trailer, they, they will. You I know don't, what I'm I don't, saying. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't we'll, we'll, no, I'm just saying because I don't like no fat bitches. All right, don't listen, be trying to put that on me. You're a liar. I don't date no. <laughs> Keep it real. Do I date <laughs> fat women? Like, do I like fat women? Come on, sit you I don't on know me. what you like, nigga. Well, I'm married. My wife is petite. No, but what I'm saying, you like this big ass husky. I don't agree because I think these other races will hit anything too. I just think they we see majorities of the races that are stick by their women more because their women stick by them more. That's why I think it's just the the battle of us between black men and black women. You know what I'm saying? We just want black women to get on our one accord with us. The, 
Sorry. Go ahead. Black bro. Black yeah. people engage in the, they 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 have fantasy, right? We we hate reality. The reality is, look, go to Old Miss. Look at that video where all those white boys are making freaking pork sounds when that fat chick tried to. You saw that? Yeah. yeah with yeah. a big fat. Yeah. Like they don't. They want a certain thing, right? They want a woman who's going to have their kids, not say much and, you know, kind of just be get with their program. Black men want that, too. The problem is, can't nobody be loyal to somebody who ain't even loyal to themselves. And black men, we betrayed ourselves a long time ago. That's, you know, Elaborate. everything we do Elaborate. is self-defeating. It's very treasonous to our own, you know, our own ilk, right? Um, we not over here trying to manifest and make things happen for ourselves. We trying to figure out what white guy, like the reparations movement that you guys love so much. What? Let me not get off. I'm not offending you. You throwing shots, nah, nigga. Don't, don't say it. We don't even talk about you. We don't even come interrupt you, nigga. I'm the host, yeah. nigga. And we don't even care about the damn reparations, <laughs> nigga. Let's just talk. Yeah, if you would keep up with the content, you would know. We tell people you ain't getting reparations unless you're going to war. You was all about reparations a couple months ago. Stop it, You never heard me preach about reparations. Now you're going too far with the cap. We here with all facts, nigga. No cap, all facts, goofy. Well, if it well if it don't apply, let it fly. But what I'm saying look at that you got all these black dudes very effeminate oh we deserve reparations it's a debt that's oh what other group of men in they they gamble or bet their future on whether another group of men is going Hand them something. They ain't betting on that, but a lot of everybody, else, everybody else got their reparations, nigga. It don't matter what they got. So they're got. not betting it on that. It's they're just the betting fact that other that. people got them and what we did Look, five years ago, six, seven years ago, let's give it seven years, black people were all about do for self, buy black, I mean, we would start networks all over the world with black people buying for black people. That dissipated. Why? It was replaced by the, the white man going to give me reparations because my ancestors were slaves. And that has been the political narrative for black people for the past four or five years. That ain't been that ain't true, because okay. niggas didn't think about reparations until they brought it up. That, that's what he's saying. That's I what know. I'm saying. So, so mm -hmm. how, and how long? So okay, so what is our political narrative? He's the saying only thing you see reparations, reparations. Right? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. No, I'm saying you're kind of, you're trying to, it sounds like you're trying to allude to once the president changed, things changed for us, what we, what we value almost at, for that point of time. Well, well, when the president was Donald Trump, my favorite, Trump 2024, you're black men just were focused on hating Donald Trump because that's what white men instructed us to do. Once Trump was gone, we were like, oh, Master Biden going to do something for us. Once he showed, look, I'm down with the Latinos. I ain't messing with y'all like that. We had to find something else. We had to find another religion to something else to believe in. Obama gave us hope and change. You have black dudes walk around, hope and change. Like, we don't have a political niggas didn't care about Trump until that money came in, nigga. EDD and shit didn't hit. Niggas didn't give a fuck about Trump. I don't believe that. What, what, did, Trump like, do, what did Trump do to, to, change, your, to change your situation? Uh, Trump reduced inflation. Trump passed the First Step Act. This is not going to become about Trump. No, it's not. It's not. Right. Look, but I'm going to say this. <laughs> if you're still asking that question in 2024, you just got to go do some research, ultimately. No, I understand. Look, I'm going to say this because I'm standing change, firm so. on... What I said, because I think you're a little misinformed. We do not preach, hey, give us reparations. We preach and have been preaching since day one. Anything you want out of life, you're going to have to take it. There's no peace without war. So week in, week out, this is what we are instructing to our people. Anything that we want, nobody's going to give to you. You don't, the, whoever colonized you, because it's the word that we love to use, oh, colonizer, colonizer. They're not just giving you anything. A school bully doesn't take your school lunch and just hand it back because you say, hey, can I have my lunch back? No, you stop getting bullied by bullying the bully. Knock the bully the fuck out and he's going to go try to find an easier fight. So until... Our people are ready to knock the bully out. We're going to keep being the easiest fight. Every other race, they kamikaze in behind they shit. Period. I don't give a fuck who it is. The Spanish, the whites, the Indians, whoever. They're going to kamikaze behind they shit. <coughs> Mind you, they Jeez. might get it a little easier because that creates the divide and conquer down here. But the average stupid motherfucker can't see that. They, You know what I'm saying? I don't agree with you. Because one thing, black people, us, us. We aren't colonized. Nobody colonized us. We were taken from where we lived and brought here in, as a labor force. Other races are not kamikazing behind anything. If that was the case, 
in World War II, the Japanese would have fought to the last man. They did not do that. Their emperor surrendered that island, and then they worked with the white man to be able to survive and thrive, and they said, we're going to compete along a different line. Right now, Palestine, what are all those Muslim countries doing about Palestine right now? They're sitting up kissing America's ass. But they probably, but they probably, they probably have no way to even win that war. They know that's a losing fight. Of course, they fight. But, if they got the resources and stuff to fight back, they're gonna fight but back. But the point is, this man just said they're kamikaze. So you see, so hold on, hold on, hold on. They're no. not. Are they not? No, war? they're not. Are they not fighting back? No, no they're not. What is, what is Saudi Arabia doing? Egypt. They don't even want the Palestinians to come to the place. What I'm telling you is it's time for black people to stop having this like, we're going to fight the white man. My son, you're not going to fight the white man. You love him. You want to lay up with his daughters, have babies with him, all that. It's let time to start you. being men, on be small, mature, on a, and start going to negotiate. Let me correct you on one thing. In, in diplomacy. Let me correct you on one thing because you're the only one preaching a white man. I'm not preaching white man, white man, white man. It's the elite and it's everybody else because okay. there's white people who are oppressed too. They just have... The benefit of the doubt, like Kali always like to say, and they have a little more privilege, but they're oh, under the same rule and thumb as everyone else. Do you pay taxes? Yeah, I do. Your ass is oppressed. No, I'm not. Because you, don't, the- you don't pay because you want. You pay because they force you. See, when you get a check, they take money before you get it. Listen. You're oppressed. Rich, the 1%, top 3% of Americans pay more taxes than the bottom 97%. This is a fact. You're rich. Shut up, okay? You hey, stop telling up. people that. Exotic with us today. Stop, stop <laughs> telling people that. <laughs> it's always the niggas with money stop trying to tell about somebody <laughs> oppressed. Stop telling people You're that. You're not oppressed. You're not oppressed. I don't care what you say. I know you, for real. You're not oppressed. I know I'm not oppressed, but what? I'm saying... I'm saying overall... Neither am I. O- overall... We get to fuck white women if we want listen, to. That's not oppression. Overall, you have about... What is it? 50... 100 families controlling the entire world, meaning the laws that they create, they create them without your input. You have this imaginary voting system that you love to preach. Hey, I'm going to go put my name on the ballot and the 1% who fucking is ruling the entire nation, they're going to really give a fuck about my vote. No, so who's going to rule the nation? You? Somebody has to do it. You need to have a little more gratitude that I'm there's families that have positioned themselves to where they could run the world and it'd be a prosperous place for all of us. You just complaining. I don't care about the, what's it called, the Bilderbergs and the Rothschilds. Kudos to them because they came into a world of darkness where people was freaking cannibalizing and doing all t- types of crazy stuff and they created something where you could b- have a family. My, my daughter, you know, she goes, she plays volleyball. That shit's expensive, but I can afford that. They built a pretty decent world. There's some bad stuff that happened, but the world is more good than it's bad. I'm not going to demonize. The only person I'm going to demonize is probably like Jeff Bezos or something, right? Why are you going to demonize him? Just because he's a jerk. But like maybe George Soros or something. But what I'm telling you is <laughs> overall, the white men who 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 made the white men who kind of made America and the West the way it is. I mean, I'm not going to demonize those dudes because beyond that, what were you going to do about it? It, it, they create what they did is they elevated more people out of poverty than any other ruling class in any other time in history. That's false. That's that's not false. That's false. No, it's not. Who did? Who else? That's, that's false. They who, said they created. Don't, they listen, said they, who, they, they, who, they said they created schools for people to be workers all their motherfucking lives. What's wrong with working? No, to be workers so they'll never get to a point of being nowhere ahead of where they can be at. So far, as far as <laughs> this a guy limit. worked and became rich. I'm okay. not saying that. Oh, okay. it's, it's, it's more so a limit to where they can't even think outside of working. It's people that work all their lives to work to get a check at 60 years old and never do nothing. Just because you got a decent job don't mean what's the percent of people with that's making those numbers. But the fact that we can even fathom that, sit up and articulate it. Means we are, our limit is just our imagination. Like, just think of what you said. Freaking 300 years ago, nobody was thinking like that. People were living a hand to mouth existence, trying to just survive. Now we can sit up and ponder things that are beyond us, right? And no one's like sh- shouting us down. The Gestapo's not kicking in this door, killing us for like, you know, speaking against the, the establishment. All, everything you're saying just proves my point. We're here, we're, we're, we're young, you know, some of us are attractive. I'll exclude Chris, but. Mr. Viral, but we're, 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 we're listen, we you are in a great time, time to be alive. Dope, you guys are all haters. I'm not, I'm okay with the white man. You know, he's not impacting me like that. Oh, let me interject. This is why we call him Uncle Ruckus. For the ones who don't know, this is why. It makes sense this, this in the black a, community. This is a white man 
bootlicker per se, <laughs> boot right? Lick. He just skipped over the entire black history of how we, <laughs> before we were colonized, how we civilized the world. He just skipped right over how the Moors ruled Europe for hundreds and hundreds of years the and heck? taught the motherfuckers how to take baths. The Moors weren't taught even black. Taught them mathematics. Taught them science. Taught the them Moors weren't even shit. black. They were. Do, do your, your history. history. No, do your history. No, they weren't God even black. History. Do the your history. The ones that you know that they were black were slaves do to your Arabs. History. <laughs> the, the, the Moors were Arabs. They were the, the ones fact, who were black no, listen, were slaves The fact to the that Arab you ones. said all black people came over here on a boat, that just lets me know you are one of the... The the slaves who think they're that? free. The you greatest, did. You said they brought us over. The, we greatest, we the did. greatest slaves so are some the of ones us who think they're already? free. They already got him mentally. Okay. But let enough of the political shit because he he's he wants to preach this Donald <laughs> Trump that shit. We are gonna go that forever. <laughs> we already had episodes debating with him on that. Go back and tap in on that. We had the whole the black people come from Africa movement episode. Go tap on that. I think it's episode number forty. It's Let's get back stuff. to the. Original topics. <laughs> Romeo right? and Juliet. No, no, no. Fuck Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you mad now? That's he comes trying to turn into a political shit. Hey, you, need to, you, need, you, need to, you need to put a Boondocks episode <laughs> or a, a clip of it so they can know who Uncle Ruckus is. Get it. your own shit struck down. <laughs> no, look. This, this, <laughs> go ahead and sure. do it. Look, this yeah. one topic. Black people, or pe not even black people, parents putting their children out at 18. This is something I want to talk about. Every parent I speak to, they're waiting on the day their kid turns 18 because in their mind, their parenting duty is over. Now, we're in a climate and we're in an economy where grown people, grown, I'm talking 40 years old, can barely get by. People making $100,000 a year, living check to check. But parents are still under the assumption that, hey, when my kids turn 18, they got to figure it out. They got to get out or go to the military, which I think is fucked up. I think you're a deadbeat parent if you have that mindset. I think your kids should be able to stay at home as long as they can to where they have the advantage when they do finally fly off and leave the nest. I'm not saying coddle and baby them forever to where you handicap them to, the, uh, to, to being a responsible, productive adult, but you should help them get an advantage in this fucked up world that we living in, in this fucked up economy that we living in. How do y'all feel about this? Because to me, at 18, you're still a kid. It's yeah. 18. Even though it's legal limit to go to the military, smoke and this and that, you're still a teenager. The human brain does not fully develop till 25. So the fact that you think your kid is a full-grown, responsible adult at 18 is insane to me. I think this comes from, and especially in our community, the I struggled, so you have to struggle too. I went out at 18, so you have to do the same thing, too. I figured it out, so you'll figure it out, too. But I think the parents that do that fail to realize the position that they're in, meaning that they might not be in the best position that they were. And as a parent, I think your, your, your duty and your job is to make sure that your child has a better future than you. So why would you then let history repeat itself by saying, hey, when I was 18, I left and I dealt with all this fucked up shit and I ended up here. So then why would I let you do the same thing and have the possibility of creating the same you get what I'm saying, exact outcome that I had. That's how history and, and generational curses, curses, you know what I mean, continue to go on, unfortunately. I was blessed enough to have family that allowed me to stay as long as I wanted to. Now, I got up out of there because I was just one of them niggas that was on my, on my job. But at the same time, some people don't have the money or the income to then say, hey, go ahead and stay at home, right? Because... Some kids got to work at 16, 17. And then at that point, a lot of kids end up just saying, you know what, well, fuck it, I'm a grown up, I'm out of here. So I, I think it's a nuanced conversation, but nobody should be pushing their kids to move out at 18 unless, I mean, they're, you know, financially ready or you guys are just not, it's a problem within the house. Like I, I think that's a lot just more so in our communities because I have a lot of friends from different races and their parents don't even be wanting their kids to fucking yeah. leave. They all be putting in on the rent, you know what I'm saying? All got money to stack and save or do whatever they want to do. They be happy to be with their kids because that's how they look at it as they babies forever. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's more so in our environments. I think more so black people are Africans. We we are the main ones that, like he said, not really coddling, but teach them how to really survive outside of that. Even though you allow them to stay with you, I think... I think it's just better regardless anyway because anything can happen. I think spending more time with your parents and life and just in general because people lose their parents mm -hmm. early. A lot of things, different things go on and you probably wish you had more moments of being around your family versus actually not having family. So I don't, 
I just think people got to live their life how they what's best for them and fuck what the world suggests it should be. I mean, <clears throat> we all saw baby boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mom's trying to get her back ripped off by by Melvin. Uh, she ain't trying to have you up in the house. I mean, that was a real trifling ass scene, low key though. Bro, what but did that's you say? Was bro, bro, her back. Bro, hey, but look, hold on. Because <laughs> you bring up the movie, what he could say? This grandma's house. Yeah. Yeah, you but, ain't never had to leave the nest of fun, had to. Yeah, but, <laughs> but listen. She never had to go get shit. Mama yeah. died and she got the house. But so he like, fuck it. You didn't really go out here and just get it. But she was a woman, right? But the, baby boy, he wasn't paying no rent. He wasn't doing shit. So I think he that came was to a, he for, came to a position yeah. where he wasn't a boy no more, and she was kind of like Dude, trying to push him out. Yeah, the nest. you're doing yeah. too much. And on top of that, he's a man. You know what I'm saying? And her mom died and left her the house. That's the way it is. And when she would have died, she probably would have left him the house. But the the point I mean, the situation is more nuanced, obviously, than we're gonna we're gonna give it credit for. Um. Here's the thing. If you are being raised by a single mother, getting kicked out the house is her doing you a favor. Because she's probably just like, I ain't shit. If you stay around me, you ain't going to be shit type thing, right? I agree with that. I left my mom's house when I was 14 years old because I saw she, she wasn't doing shit with her life. brother got kicked out and got smoked. Kept, and that's okay. <laughs> but guess what? Maybe uh, maybe death is better than living up under a single mother. For life. <laughs> no, I'm dead ass, bro. I'm dead ass. That's just a slow death. But ultimately... This is just a problem when you're dealing with single mothers, right? Men, even when they kick you out, like say they son, you know, son, you got to move on or whatever. That's more like I've taught you. I know I've equipped you with what you needed to know. And I'm sending you out there so you can go and make a life for yourself. Your dad's going to push you out the nest when... It's time for you to go most most. Look, most I'm gonna say this though. I'm not Damn, gonna why push you always it. gotta interrupt me? I wasn't done. <laughs> Hold on, I wanna interject on what you said before before I lose the thought. Because I've even talked to men who was like, man, I can't wait till this little motherfucker turn 18. And I know for a fact you ain't equipped him with nothing really to survive in the world, but the fact that he turned 18 and now, oh, you can get off child support, or now you don't have to <laughs> financially support him, you're gonna send him out to the wolves. Which will lead to most of the time failure. But nine times many, out of ten. But how many dads have you really seen? Like, son, you gotta get the fuck. You don't see that, bro. Like, I'm a dad. You're a dad. Think of how we look at it. Your dad might talk trash. That's what dads will do. I moved in with my grandfather. He talked a lot of shit. You know, yeah. I don't know if you was raised yeah. by your dad. Was you yeah. raised by yeah. Yeah, your dad? Talk a lot of shit. A lot of shit. He ain't gonna do shit, but he talks shit. Yeah. That's how I mean, men are. Might, we gonna talk. Might. I mean, he might do something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I assume he's you know dark skin. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, the thing is, dads just talk shit. We we really soft on our kids, right? Like as far as like you got to get out. My daughter, she can stay as long as she want to stay. I don't care what her mom say. If she want to land there. Now, of course, I want her to do something productive with her life, but she's a hard worker, so she will. This is a product of single mothers, single parent households, specifically with single mothers. And the reason they got to get you out of the house, one, so their boyfriend can move in, two, because they're not working. They're just on welfare. Those resources aren't enough. You're a young man. You eating up all the food. Your sister could stay. You notice that sometimes that dynamic, the women could stay. Why? Because they can always get pregnant and then go receive county benefits, the entitlement programs. So do you ever notice that the women are welcome to stay by the women, but the men have to go? Because we're not able to just walk outside and go to the county building, and now we got six, seven, eight hundred dollars in food stamps coming in. So basically, men are pushed out because we are not able to garner resources unless we go work. But if you work, you're gonna want to have. But if you work, you're gonna want to come home to a place where you got peace. And when you start making demands, like bro, I've been working all day, y'all gotta quiet them damn kids down and stuff. Look, now you messing up the vibe because this is you know. Do what I'm you Get agree out. with kicking your kid out of eighteen? Uh, I don't agree with that. Who does? Yeah. I don't. I, I I also think that. Oh, you go ahead. My fault. No, nah, you actually go ahead. I already said I don't. I don't agree. Okay, I, yeah. I just wanted to get that on yeah, the panel. I know you wanted to be yeah. clear. Yeah. Exactly. So we all in agreement because I've spoken with other races to where they tell will actually tell their daughters, "Hey, don't move out until you find a husband." Like some of the, um, I want to say the Asian community to where I know their daughters, they're twenty five still at home, and they like, "Hey, you ain't got to go till you find a husband because I want you to leave." My house, be me being your father, I want you to leave my house into your husband's house because I'm passing you off to him. You're now his responsibility because that's usually what happens when a woman gets married. She goes from the care and the protection of her father to the care and the protection of now her husband. 
like they used to do with arranged marriages and shit before these bitches start picking their own fucking mans and fucking their lives up. But there a lot of other races still have that that culture in them. Like, hey, you stay here, get your money up. You want to go to school, get your degree. I'm trying to make it easy as possible for you here so you can be as successful as you want to be because let's keep it real most two-parent homes hey we're set we don't need no help from you like you even have some parents like hey when you turn 18 you get a job you paying the bill this motherfucker work at Foot Locker yeah. he getting a 700 dollars check <laughs> after taxes is 350 maybe and you want yeah. him to help you with the bills yeah. you're supposed to be set already and you're depending on your child that you brought in the world to financially help you that's also fucked up if your kid is living with you and they get a job let them stack mm -hmm. so so they can go invest that money and bubble up to where they don't got to keep calling you for loans or move out and have to move back in and shit like that. Yeah. Because right now we're seeing a huge influx of kids, not moving even kids, full-blown adults, moving back in with their, back with their parents. A huge, I mean like 50% of the women I talk to all move back home. And they all say, oh, you know, my mom's living with me. No, bitch, you're living with your mom. <laughs> the, the thing Let's is, keep it real. I think, I think, I, one I of the main think things. a lot of those parents do that so they men, for the men or the women, don't have to deal with the relying on somebody else and going through mm. the things how somebody will treat you different from having it and not having it. That's a fact. I think that's a bigger part. So it's like for me to prevent you to going through all that. Look, I'm gonna instill all this shit in you. Get your shit right, and then like you say, you lead a nest when you when I feel like you either equipped or I know you're equipped to where I don't have to worry about you ever once you once you grow your wings and sprout. The underlying issue with what the situation that we're speaking on is that. The black community, we know how to survive, not live. Right. So Fair. when you know how to survive, all you can teach is how to survive. So that's why we say you got to get out there. You got to just go. You got to just do it because that's how you survive. When you live, it's more so we setting things up for you to live life, not to just be out there, you know, first time feet on the ground and you don't know what to do. You're not equipped. So that's the underlying problem here is that the black community only knows how to survive. We don't necessarily know how to live and thrive in positivity. So this is where you see a lot of these issues like happen. Even when he's talking about with the single Boy. mom thing, it's a it's a fact where she could be in the crib annoyed. You know, now she on your bumper. Now you back on her bumper. Now in a year you gone just because of the negative energy of whatever they're going on in their life. So it's a lot of different things that do go into it. But to me, that's the number one underlying problem is we don't know how to live. Yeah, we have a very, very animalistic way of like dealing with each other. Like you look at an animal in the wild, the mom teaches him how to survive and then she has to bite him or something to make him run off and go on his own. We do that same thing. But ultimately, I think that most of this stuff just revolves around black people's idea of what freedom actually is. Right. I remember my mom would say, man, once y'all out of the house, I'll be free to do this and free mm -hmm. to do that. Was it the fact that she really was going to be free because she lives by herself and she's freaking blowing my phone up every day trying to have a random conversation about bullshit? The, we just have, a, we believe that be, that freedom is being able to do whatever you want, whenever you want, and all that stuff. Whereas, mom, if I'm working, I go get me a good job. You know, we we both paying, in, paying on the bills and the rent. You'll have some real freedom because you could say, you know what, I'm going to the Bahamas. Son, can you get the rent this month? Because I want to go fly here. Moms, I got it at school. Go do you, right? We just have a very short-sighted, instant gratification, you know, mindset. We just look at something and we try to reduce it down to the simplest, like, form, and then we act on that. Well, I'm broke. I don't got enough. Well, you know what? The easy thing to do, get him out of here because I had to spend 300 on groceries versus 150 for myself. And we just want immediate results. I just think a lot of us <laughs> is raised. We're not, we not taught shit. Like, it's like, yeah, we're... We're fed. You got a place to eat. You got a place to sleep. You got a place to shit. You know what I mean? You go to school. I go to work. And that's it. You're not necessarily throughout that whole process even being taught about, like you just said, instilling things of natural living to get you to understand how to live when I'm up out of here. So I think that's the biggest flaw when it comes to us. People, we got single home parents. They come home. They ain't got no energy to be trying to teach you nothing about nothing. You don't know nothing about credit. You don't know nothing about saving. You don't know nothing about shit because they living paycheck to paycheck. So I think that'd be the biggest part. <laughs> no, and it's very selfish. It's very, it's very yeah. selfish. A, a lot of times in the community, it can be very selfish. I know kids who was like, moms hid the whatever under the bed, or 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 we couldn't eat. Like niggas used to say, moms hide the snacks, or 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 or, or, or I see niggas on Twitter talking about I couldn't eat a rib when I was a, a kid or something. I'm like, 
Who was y'all parents? Like, who was y'all bro, parents? That's I crazy to me. I had to ask permission to get water. That's crazy to me. That's like, <laughs> and, and, and parents don't well, understand what that, what's that, what's that's doing. That's you get what I'm saying? Like, like, don't go in the fridge yeah. until you ask permission. Like, bro, bro. Like, bro oh God. She just know you an animal, right? And she that's, just, and that's when you get 25, 26. Now you don't, you know, you be like, damn. You see that shit start to be a trickle down effect getting treated like that. Bro, like, it's, it's crazy. Bro, you I, I a, say this though, because to a point that, that you just made, that goes back to the system designing it that way because it keeps you as a slave, literally. Right, that's all you I was go saying. to work all fucking day, you come home, burned out, rinse, cycle, repeat for 50, 60 years, then you got maybe 7 to 10 years of life to live. But the whole time, you've been a slave, you don't have any knowledge to give to your kids because you were never given the knowledge, and that just repeats and repeats and repeats and repeats. Then you got motherfuckers like Uncle Ruckus who's happy because they can go buy a fucking cheeseburger and a new fucking t-shirt, <laughs> and they feel like they're free, and they can vote for some motherfuckers who got their fucking thumb on you anyways. But but you feel you're free. Meanwhile, you're living the same life over and over for 60 goddamn years. Right. The, the greatest gift is not money. The, it, it's time. Time is more valuable than money. Bro. The freedom of time, is that's freedom. Bro, you can get... Listen, first of all, why do we keep pretending like these people is actually have jobs? These motherfuckers are on welfare, bro. That's what Everybody's they're on. A small so percent, they ain't working girl. hard all day. They sitting around the house watching P-Valley. Who are these people, though? These people you <laughs> talk about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bro are says these, people? these people you talk about. Which like, people? These are just people in general. Who no, because you said P-Valley. This is how fucked up you talking about these people. <laughs> the way they talk about black people watching P-Valley. Ain't no white people watching P-Valley, How do you bro? know that? And let's keep it real. There's more white people on welfare than anybody. These so dudes, stop that's, stereotyping that's, that's, niggas as being on welfare. You just assume because you associate all black people with being the general. No, you know who you say these people, you talking about us, nigga. I know you, Goofy. That's the way you look at it. No, it's but, the way we look at it. That's just the way you've been conditioned. But what I'm saying is this. Nigga. Listen, <laughs> who's watching Tubi? <laughs> who's watching Tubi, okay? We need to just keep it a buck. Ain't nobody oppressing you, bro. Ain't nobody forcing you to do anything that you don't want to do. These, look, I'm not trying to cap for white people, right? But you got stuff like financial aid. I mean, if you come from an impoverished family, you got all types of programs, grants, all that. You could go to school. Let when are we gonna stop blaming white people and just blame the true culprit, black culture? Name three the grants. The culture for that me. Listen, the three what? Three grants. You talking about all these grants and all these? Bro, there's a whole Hell. freaking. You went to college? Yeah, for a little bit. There's I, a I book this big school. of grants for people no, just because they black. Hold on, that's let, it. Let that's me. True. Let but me, the, but we on, don't put priority on. I have to correct. You got to interrupt. I do. Filibuster. No, I, I, I do, because I have to make it known for the people who's watching, we aren't blaming white people, and we aren't telling people we're oppressed. We actually preach the exact opposite. People who are oppressed are oppressing themselves by agreeing to things that's going on and being done and laws being made, and they're just agreeing with it. So when I speak of being oppressed, that's what I speak of. In that context, like taxes, we all crying about taxes. We all crying about the cost of living, but yet we're all just going along with it. We're all just essentially agreeing with it by not doing anything. When they raised taxes back then, guess what? They had the Boston Tea Party. Hey, we ain't doing that shit. We finna tear up the streets. Look at the farmers in France. They raised that tax on them out there and they went crazy in the streets. We... Just complain about it, do a lot of lip service, but we still paying. We still following these goddamn laws. When you're saying we, who are you referring to? Because you're confusing me the about the, population. the particular victim class that you've, you know, you've aligned yourself. The working with. class of people. Okay, but we're talking which is the about, majority. We're talking about poor people. Uh, working class people most times don't kick their kid out. If you're not rich, when you're they're poor. eighteen. Well, no, that's not true. But middle class don't exist right listen, now. Listen, the middle class is here. Let's move on, man. What yeah, we, we gotta got? move on. So, I mean, shit, we, we low-key ran you out of time. Up, yeah. yeah, we got to yeah, wrap it up. Yeah, let's get you all walked, just worked got, up. You just... First of all, before we leave, <laughs> hey, we, we just hey, killed hey, him. Hey, nah. <laughs> he was just, hey, I'm about to stop this right now. You want to bring up a nigga that look like him. <laughs> <laughs> Let me kill hey, him, bro. Because he said it was no black moors. So <laughs> I'm going to give you bro, some motherfucking history picture. right there. That's this him, is an bro. actual black born history. This might be What's me in my past life. <laughs> What's that? I, I don't know his motherfucking name. That dude was a slave. This wasn't a slave, bro. This How do you know? How do you what know? What do you mean? Because I have the history on it. The black this ain't a slave, bro. All right, man. We can this is an actual war. Like, you can do your shit. Googles, do your research. Is that how the show how they civilized the Europe over there for hundreds and hundreds All of right, years. Man. They ruled for hundreds and hundreds of years. There was actual black royalty throughout history. There's actual black royalty today.
okay? The problem is they don't tell you about it. They brainwash you to think like this fucking coon over here. And this is what you get. This is a product of brainwashing. But do your research. There were black more. Man, how much we got I need to, to do my DNA. So I, roast this hey, look, I need to no, do my one, two, three me on this shit. <laughs> look, somebody give me a uh, somebody give me a line on this bloodline. I, Listen, I might got everybody some, has a cell phone in their pocket. Over there in Europe, they might, might have a fucking palace over there or something. Just do some research. That's all you got to do. Period. The more the black Moors, they were primarily slaves to the Arab Moors, and this is just the way it is, you know. But ultimately. Y'all got we got you gotta wrap up. Like I like I said, we gotta wrap up. Make sure y'all share, like, subscribe to the channel, man. Tap in. It's always good to have Uncle Ruckus in the building. Hopefully he could be on time next time. But hey, come here for the facts. I'm Go over there for the cap. We here to lead the way, like my bro Messiah say. The viral way. Shoot. Bang. Ain't no handouts, I did it from the ground up yeah. In the streets, dug in hardest where they found us exactly. Got a problem, nigga, watch my troopers mount up My bitches bang too, and you a lame though You niggas ain't outside, yeah, we came through You want your lights up, we put you on the shack